Good morning. Uh, I am happy to announce the PlayStation Legacy, not the classic, the PlayStation Legacy is finished. So, from a stock PlayStation Classic, I have modded the hell out of this thing. This thing has got less original parts than Kim Kardashian. It is insane. Um, the inside basically gutted. Look, here's the inside. So you've got the, the PCB, the heat shield, even the stickers and the fake. What I thought was um, uh, like a heat distribution thing. It turns out it's just a sticker to make it look like the underside of the original PlayStation. Focus up. There you go. Um, all of that's gone. Ripped it out. And in its place, brand new system got... Um, well, let me show you. So this is the PlayStation Classic and this is the PlayStation Legacy. Uh, you'll see why it's called that in a second. So, PlayStation Legacy. On the outside, there are obviously one or two things that you'll notice a little bit different. Firstly, focus up. There we go. Firstly, obviously the memory card. Now this memory card, this is just a piece of Perspex that I have cut and shaped and sprayed and painted and etched to look like the original memory cards. So what happens when you pull this out? Well, I'm going to try and do this one-handed. Pull it out gently. There we go. Just a little plastic Perspex memory card to look like the original memory card. But this is just a cap. Okay, you can see there's just a little cut there. And the cap is for... Oh, there we go. Hello. That's a 128 gig micro SD card. That goes to a Raspberry Pi. Obviously, the Raspberry Pi is inside. You've got player one, player two, and across the back, HDMI. Focus up. There you go, just a standard HDMI and a standard micro uh, USB. Exactly the same as the PlayStation Classic. The only way you would know this is the PlayStation Legacy is obviously that memory card and underneath a fan, which I've just cut a hole into and installed a fan, there you go, and where it says PlayStation Legacy because obviously I got rid of those stupid stickers. Um, specifically, the stupid sticker, 18 certificate, like, what? Anyway, so that's done. What's inside the thing? Well, you have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Um, you have two buttons here and here. So the first button is the power button. So you click that, it runs a startup script and it'll also run a shutdown script. So if it, even if it crashes, you can just tap that and it'll just run a shutdown script, safe shutdown. Everyone's got one. This one here is a completely programmable function button. You can program it to do anything in RetroArch. You want to take a screenshot? Click. You want to mute the volume? Click. You want to do like this one does, return to emulation station? Click. Goes back to emulation station. You can program it to do anything. You want to change disks? Click. You want to change to the next disk? Click. Previous disk? Click. Anything you want, you can tell it to do that. Easy peasy. Under the reset switch, you have a uh, is linked to the fan. So that just goes to the 5 volt rail, so you just click that, so it opens the circuit, fan comes on. You don't need the fan on, but you know, it's it's quiet as hell. It's only a tiny little five volt fan, but um, yeah, it just keeps things nice and cool. I've also blocked off the vents on this side because the Pi sits here um, with the USBs facing this side. So this side's open, the other side's closed. And because it's a sealed unit, it actually sucks air in and blows it out across the Pi. So it keeps things nice and cool. What else does this thing come with? Well, I'm glad you asked. It comes with an original DualShock 1. This is about, I think this is about 2021, 20, maybe even 22 years old, I'm not sure. But this is an original DualShock 1, which I have modded to USB. And it takes the USB plug that came from the Classic. It also has one of the other Classic controllers. However, even though it says player one, player two, and you just plug it in this uh, DualShock, original DualShock, and it goes, or any USB um, cable, and it goes. You can plug anything into this thing. Uh, any of these controllers here will work. You want a DualShock 3? No problem, Bluetooth. DualShock 4? Same again, Bluetooth. 360 controller? Absolutely no problem. Nintendo Switch Pro controller? Arguably one of the best controllers ever made? No problem. You want a SNES controller? Absolutely no problem. Saturn controller, if that's you like me and it's your favorite? Absolutely no problem. All of these will work, and that includes four-player games. So any multi-tap games, you can plug one in here, one in here, and then just Bluetooth up two more, you've got four-player. So that's a quick overview 
of what this thing looks like and what it does. What I'm gonna do is pause it in a minute, hook it up to the TV, and show you basically it running. But I've shown other videos, there's other videos in this playlist of it running. So, <clears throat> as far as the PlayStation Legacy goes, how long did it take? Well, it took a long time. When you order the parts like I do from China, to make them as cheap as humanly possible, they take a while to turn up. So building something like this will cost you very little, and I'm about to tell you how much in a second, but you've got to wait. And obviously you've got to do it yourself. I have no engineering and no electronics experience at all. I started doing this like a couple of years ago, and I'm at the point now where I can solder, glue, cut the insides, shape the insides, sand the insides. I also don't use 3D printers. I don't use any power tools at all. I use cheap hand tools from the pound shop. Honestly, this I made with knives from the pound shop and hacksaw blades from the pound shop. Um, the spray paint was a pound from the pound shop. This is used for car alloy wheels. Um, all of this stuff you can do cheap. You don't need experience and you don't need money. You can do this. It's really that simple. All you need is patience. Like I learned to program this button. It took me two days. I learned to do it. I have no Linux training or education at all. Doing this, modding this, I had to learn. You're already on YouTube. You have the access to the biggest database of information. You can do this. This is not just me showing off. You can do this. If you need any help, there are people out there that can help you. I'll help you. Just message me. I'll help you. It's not hard. Well, no, it is hard. All right. I'm not going to lie. It is hard, especially if you've got no training, but you can do it. It's, it's within your grasp. All right, so what I've done, <clears throat> so you've seen the thing. I, like, I might actually put this in another video. I might have an, a second video to this showing it running, but either way, here's the thing. What does it do? Well, let's just have a quick look at this handy dandy, totally not my daughter's whiteboard. Um, just a little quick thing, uh, features list. So does it have DualShock? Well, the Legacy does, we know that. Yes. Classic, no. Okay, four players. Well, yeah, the legacy will go up to as many players as you like, but mm, no. Does it have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? So the Wi-Fi in this, it will link up to your home network. You can add more games wirelessly through like your phone or your PC. You can also save screenshots. You can make that screenshot button if you want. You'll save screenshots. You can look that on your phone, put it on Twitter, whatever. Does it have Wi-Fi? Of course it has Wi-Fi. Does it have Bluetooth? Absolutely. Uh, no. Multiple save states. You can have as many save states as you want. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, no. Does it have a programmable button? Well, this one does. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Um, no. No, that one doesn't. Does it? No. Nineties ads. When you pause this thing or leave it for ten minutes, it runs ads from the nineteen nineties, including the Second Life ad the Crash Bandicoot ad, the Saps ad, the You Are Not Ready ad, it runs all of those. So it celebrates the legacy of the PlayStation, absolutely. Uh, this, uh, not so much, no. Removable memory card, yep. That definitely has one of those. Uh, no, no, it doesn't have that. Does it have Rainbow Bloody Six? No, it doesn't, that's a plus. Oh yeah, it does, no, classic does, yeah. Total cost, how much did this thing cost to build? including all the parts from China. Believe it or not, this thing, and remember in the PlayStation Classic, cost on release 90 pounds. This one with everything, including the PlayStation Classic, cost me 103 pounds. 13 pounds more expensive than this. And if you didn't want the DualShock, if you just wanted to plug in your own random controller or use these, you could take another 13 pounds off that and it would be exactly the same price. I am not joking, because this cost 13 pounds. It was a tenner for the DualShock and three pounds for the mod inside. So if you didn't want this and you just wanted this, exactly the same price. So yeah, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna put this in another video. Here's the list of all the things. What I might do is just make, a, a, make this a part one and make part two, just hooking this thing up and running. I also said that I would never plug this thing in and I never did. I just got it out of the box, ripped it out. I might plug that in just to do a side by side. But yeah, okay, so that is the PlayStation Legacy finished. Peace.